Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm one of the tutors in the Econ Tutoring Center. Uh, first of all, remember that notation changes by professor, so just make sure to confirm that the notation we're using is the same as your professor. Uh, but anyway, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the algebra of taxes. Um, so we've seen how taxes can affect an economy and producer and consumer surplus, but sometimes if we want to apply that to particular demand or particular supply equations, uh, uh, a particular tax T, uh, it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to show you how we might do that with some linear demand curves uh, over there. All right, so today we're going to do a quick example with a tax uh, on these two supply and demand uh, equations with the tax of $1.50. So first I'm going to try and draw this so get you a better idea of what's going on. And I'll be a little careful about exactly how I'm drawing it. So it's going to be our Q axis and our P axis. Okay, so first I'll draw this demand equation. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to be a little bit careful. So when P is 0, so when we are right here, uh, I can plug in 0 here and I know that QD is 20. So we'll have this is our first point for our demand curve. And then I can also check when Q is 0, so when we're right here vertically, then I can move the P to the other side and I'll get that P is 20. Um, so I get 20 here and that means if I just connect these two lines like that, that gets us our demand equation. Similarly for supply, if I check when P is equal to zero, so right here, our quantity supplied is going to be five, right here. And uh, if I check, let's say when, um, I can do Q is equal to zero, I suppose. Or let's do, let's do P is equal to one. So when P is equal to one, say right here, we're going to have, if I plug in 1 for P there, we're going to have that QS is equal to 7 right here, which will get me this supply curve right there. Um, I'll draw a little bit better S. That's our initial supply and our initial demand curves. So I just plugged in a couple points, and because they're lines, all I need to do is get two points, and that'll be good enough uh, to draw out the lines. Okay, so first thing we want to do now is let's try solving for this initial equilibrium here, E. Uh, the way we do that is we simply set supply equal to demand because we want to find the point, the price and quantity where these two are equal to each other. So I'm going to get 20 minus P is equal to 5 plus 2P. Then I'm going to get that 15 is equal to 3P. P is equal to 5, so that gets us this right here. And then if I plug this P is equal to 5 into either supply or demand, I should find that we have Q is equal to 15. So that is our equilibrium price and quantity. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to apply this tax. I'm going to redraw this picture really quickly over here. We had our supply, our demand, this equilibrium quantity was 15, equilibrium price was 5 QP. Okay, so, and I'll rewrite these really quickly too. This is going to take a bit of work here. Just remind myself what that was. That was 20 minus P. And QS is equal to uh, 5 plus 2P. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to apply this tax to the supplier. So I want to say the supplier now, you have to pay $1.50 more every time you produce a good. So we're trying to vertically shift this curve by T, where T is equal to $1.50. So if you remember from a previous video, the way we can shift up a curve like that to get our new supply with a tax is by is with this trick here. So QD is going to stay the same because we're not shifting that at all. QS we're going to shift, try and shift vertically by this tax of 150. So the way we do that is by applying this. QS is equal to 5 plus 2. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shift P down by 150 at every uh, at every quantity. So now when we do the algebra here, 
it should work out nicely. We should have QS with the tax is equal to 5 plus 2P minus 3, which is really just 2 plus 2P. There we go. Okay, so that is this the equation for this new supply curve up here. So now if I want to find this new equilibrium here, which is the equilibrium after the tax, I can just set this new supply curve equal to that same demand curve, which is going to get me uh, 2 plus 2p two is equal to 20 minus p. And that should get me that 3p is equal to 18, so p is equal to 6. So I knew this p is 6, which looks good at a higher price now. And we should have a new quantity of 14 because we can just plug it into this demand curve and get 16 minus 6 is 14. Okay, so now we have our new equilibrium with the tax, our old equilibrium without the tax, and now we can find, let's say, the deadweight loss. Okay, so I'm just going to show you really quickly, now that we've solved for this new equilibrium, uh, I have everything kind of color coordinated here, <clears throat> how to calculate the deadweight loss and the tax revenue. So remember, our tax is just this T is equal to 1.5, which is just this vertical distance here between 6 and 4.5. So we're going to get, the government's going to collect a tax of 1.5 for each of the 14 units. So really that's just 1.5 times 14, which gets us this gray area of the box here. So tax revenue is really just equal to the value of the tax, 1.5, times the number of units that you're getting the tax from, which in this case will just be 21. Okay, now for deadweight loss, which is going to be this black area here. Recall, producers originally got this whole surplus down here. Consumers originally got the whole surplus up here. And now once we take out, uh, once we, the producers, or rather the consumers now face this higher price of six, Producers at 14 units face a marginal cost of 4.5. So we have this red area is the new consumer surplus. We have this blue area is the new producer surplus. Uh, we know that the gray area from before is the tax revenue. And so the only part unaccounted for is this deadweight loss. And that is just the sheer loss from adding a tax. The tax revenue, we say, isn't part of the loss because it's still staying within the economy. The consumer surplus, consumers are still receiving that, the remaining consumer surplus anyway. Producers are still receiving this blue area. So the black area is just the sheer loss from adding a tax. Um, we can calculate that because it is really just the area of a triangle here. We know the height, remember it's just one half base, and the base of this triangle is just the four and a half, or what, rather one and a half, times the height, which is just 15 minus 14, which is one, which is just going to get us three-fourths. All right, so hopefully that cleared up for you a little bit of how we apply a tax to a particular demand or supply curve. Uh, keep watching the rest of these video series to learn more about taxes.